Welcome back to MTD Global, my friends. I am here with Brent Holden today of Hymer in Illinois, and we're gonna talk a little bit about a tool dynamic preset and how it can benefit you. So Brent, welcome back to MTD Global. Thanks, Tony, great to have you back. And today, I get to learn a little bit about balancing and tool life and how this can benefit our customers, but I know that you're gonna explain it a lot better than I can. So <laughs> if we may, Tell us a little bit about this tool dynamic preset and what it can do to help benefit your customers. Yeah, sure, Tony. So it's actually a, it's a two-in-one machine, which is unique. So this is a tool holder balancing machine combined with a tool presetter. So it's got two functions built into one. But as far as benefiting the customer, there's multiple benefits, of course. From the presetting standpoint, this is where you can set your Z-axis dimension, inspect your tools, et cetera, all offline while the machine tool is running. So again, keeping the machine running is the big benefit. This is being done while the machine's running, you're getting set up for your next job. But the balancing thing is something that's often over for, overlooked in the industry. And what that is, is it enables you to really get the maximum out of your machine tool. So it, it leads to the fact where you can run faster, which equals getting your parts done quicker. It also has some other benefits, such as increased spindle life, better cutting tool life, uh, better and more consistent part tolerances if you're cutting as the tool's designed to cut because of, the, because of the balance. So yeah, there's multiple benefits, but really what we want to focus on is keeping the machine running and keeping a machine running to the maximum so that you get your parts done quicker. That's where the real money's made. Yeah, Brent, that makes sense to me. And let's focus a little bit on that. So presetters, to be fair, a lot of us are somewhat familiar with presetters now, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of them out there. We get to choose who we want. But the combination of balancing as well, you mentioned it, balancing is often overlooked. Yes. And that is something that's quite significant. And let's throw out a couple of numbers. I know you have them about percentages of how much we have to reduce the feed rate or what the tool life that's lost by not being balanced and how that actually works here. And you guys focus on that, which allows that increase in production. Absolutely. So to give you just some numbers, uh, we did some internal study and some internal testing in-house at Hymer. So at Hymer, we make 4,000 tool holders a day in our production. So it's a very high production environment. So what we did was we actually did a test where we ran balanced tool holder assemblies. And again, I use the word assembly because we do pre-balance our tool holders uh, from the factory. But when we say assembly, that's as it will actually run in the machine with the cut, cutting tool, with the pole stud, whatever other accessories are involved. And so we, we used a balanced assembly and then we took good timer tool holders for this comparison and didn't, didn't find balance them after assembling it. And we found we had to reduce our feeds and speeds by 10%. So you might say 10%, that's not much. But really, over the course of a year, we figured that we would have cost ourselves with the addition of slowing down this machine, which is the biggest cost, Again, losing about 10% tool life, we estimated, and also amateurizing a loss of spindle life per the predictable spindle life, we would have cost ourselves $20,000 per spindle per shift. And we run three shifts, so that would have been $60,000 per machine we would have cost ourselves by not running balanced tools. And we uh, have over 100 machines in our production. So again, it's a huge cost saving that is often overlooked. Um, and one of the easiest ways to demonstrate it is, is a little thing we have here that I'd like to show you, if you don't mind, Tony. I would absolutely love it. But before we get into that, yeah. I would like to talk really quick about that 10%. Yes. That 10% could be the difference between competing in an already competitive market or not. If you're losing that much on your overhead to begin with, and you take that 10% and say, well, that's not really important you might be losing out to the person who does think it's important. They're gonna be able to bid on jobs. They're gonna be able to get you know, that increased profit and continue to buy the newest machine and the newest technology. To me, 10% makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, you're right about that, Tony. I mean, this is the way that any shop can stay globally competitive if they invest in this kind of technology. And actually, we're standing right now in the Heimer tool room. So the whole concept of what we present at Heimer between the shrink machine, the balancing machine, the tool presetter, and the tool room is a very organized method to consistently set up your tools and get it out to the machine tool so that you can get the maximum out of that machine using modern technology. So that's why we call a lot of things the I 4.0, but it's all leading towards 
keeping everyone globally competitive. So it's definitely advantageous for people to, to utilize this kind of equipment. That's very well said. And now let's play a little bit with whatever that thing is <laughs> that you have sitting there. What is that? So this is a, a handy tool to show uh, the importance of balancing. Um, and basically, uh, it's, it's a neat demonstration that anyone should be able to relate to. So Tony, I'm going to have you hold that and I'm just going to spin this. So right now, you notice Tony's hand is, is pretty stable. And in this demo, we got to pretend Tony's arm is actually the machine tool spindle. This is the cutting edge. Everything looks pretty good. Everything's pretty balanced. What we're going to do here is just add a 30 gram weight to this, this one wheel and spin it. Now, I don't know how it shows on film, but I can see Tony's uh, arm right now. It, it's shaking pretty bad. It's what, it's what happens to me when I drink too much coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so true. And so his arm was shaking. This was moving. That's what's causing chatter. Um, so what do people do? They've got to make good parts, so they slow it down. So you slow it down, it's running more stable. But when your RPM slows down, you have to reduce your feed rates. These modern machines have the ability to run much faster. So the idea is we want to balance this, either by removing this mass, which is a, one option, and now we can run fast again, or by adding weight to the opposite side to accommodate that unbalance. And that's really all we're doing on this machine. We're just bringing this tool holder assembly to balance, and then now you can run to the max that the machine is capable of. What a brilliant use of two circles and a stick. <laughs> that, <laughs> Thank I you. mean, it really showcases how important balancing is. When you put such a small little weight on any side, I can barely hold on to the thing, especially the faster I go. And you're exactly right. As you slowed it down, even with the weight, it started to come back into, for me and my small muscles that I have, it started to come back into balance for me being able to hold it pretty modestly, right? So yeah. what a great experiment and tool to showcase how important it is to balance a tool. And yeah, and you're exactly right, Tony. And we, we use another analogy, which I think you'll find interesting. So, you know, why I say it's misunderstood. People are buying these beautiful CNC machines from you know, $50,000 to a million dollars, anywhere in between. Um, and you know, they expect them to perform. Well, I like to refer to your car. Imagine that you had a, just purchased a brand new Ferrari, let's say, and you took it out there on the street and everything ran really well. And then up to about 60, 65 miles an hour, no problem. You're really st stoked, this is a great car. But about 70, 75, 80, it starts to shake, rattle, and roll. If you went back to the, to the car dealer and said, you know, I love the car, but I get upwards of 70, 75 miles an hour, and I, the ride is terrible. And if that car dealer told you, well, just don't go above 60, <laughs> you wouldn't be too happy. And unfortunately, that's what's happening. These people are buying these machine tools that have the ability to do a lot. I mean, it's amazing what's available nowadays. And so they're just minimizing the speeds and speeds because they have to make good parts. I don't blame the operators. That's exactly what they're paid to do is make sure the parts are made well. But they're reducing the potential feeds and speeds that the machine's capable of, and their parts are taking longer to produce, and then it's harder to stay globally competitive. You're exactly right. And if I may expand on some personal experience as well, yeah. some people know that I came from uh, partially a background of air turbine spindles. We met when I was there. Yeah. We know that air turbine spindles and some of the other components out there, the high-speed accessories, go in excess of 90,000 RPM. Balancing was extremely important to your point. And if that balancing was not done correctly, obviously the run out's gonna be bad and pretty obviously that tool life is gonna be reduced, but also it heats up, which adds to expansion and it breaks down the bearings quicker than those bearings wanna be broken down. So you just compound that on a CNC spindle. You're doing the same thing. It's just bigger and stronger, so it's gonna last longer, but the same concept is happening. Absolutely, you nailed it on the head, Tony. That's exactly right. Very relevant uh, analogy as from your background. Yeah, and so. so I definitely understand why this machine is incredibly important. I personally think that, you know, everyone should have one, um, especially yeah. if we value some of the machines that we have because we want our machines to have the best life. You know, yeah. we're investing in the higher quality tooling because we want that tooling to have the best life and we need those finishes. We don't want secondary operations and we certainly don't want to slow it down by 10%. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And so we have standalone balancing machines that, that address that. This one, what's kind of unique is it's not only a balancing machine, but it's also a tool presetter. So again, if you're on the fence about should we be balancing, you know, what do we need to do for balancing, but you're in the market for a tool presetter, here you have the ability to get your Z-axis dimension, check radiuses, all the things that a presetter can do, 
but you also have that benefit of having the built-in balancing machine. So it's a very, very nice combo machine, very unique in the market. Yeah, I like that you pointed that out here as well, because if I need a presetter, why wouldn't I do both? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I really appreciate you showing me and teaching me a little bit more about this Tool Dynamic preset, and thank you again for being a part of MTD Global. I really appreciate your time, Brent. You're welcome, Tony. Thanks for coming in.